Namaste. Welcome to the next video of Machine Learning Techniques course. In this video, we will discuss discriminant functions. Discriminant functions learn direct mapping between feature vector and label. Since all of you are familiar with linear regression setup, discriminant functions basically extend that setup to the classification. In this course, we will restrict our discussion to the linear discriminant functions. So in a binary classification setup with m features and binary classifications means there are two classes, the simplest discriminant function is very similar to linear regression. The discriminant function predicts the label y as a linear combination of features. Mathematically, we represent y as w0 plus w1x1 plus w2x2 all the way up to wm xm. We can write it in a vectorized form as y is equal to w0 plus w transpose x where y is a label that comes from uh, y is a label that is a discrete quantity w0 is the bias w is the weight vector and x is a feature vector here the label y is a discrete quantity unlike a real number in the linear regression setup so let's look at discriminant functions from geometric perspective Geometrically, the simplest, the simplest discriminant function represents a hyperplane in m minus 1 dimensional space where m is the number of features. So, in the example setup where we have two features x1 and x2, the discriminant function is a line and line is indeed a one dimensional hyperplane. Since we have two features, the discriminant function will be hyperplane in 2 minus 1 which is in one dimensional space and this one dimensional hyperplane is nothing but a line. So here we have a table where we list down the number of features and the corresponding discriminant functions. For example, if we have one features we have point, if we have two features we have a line, if we have three features we have a plane, if you have four features, we have a hyperplane in three-dimensional space as discriminant function. Generalizing this, whenever we have m features, we have a, we have a hyperplane in m minus one-dimensional space as a discriminant function. In this discriminant function, there are three quantities y, w0 and w, where y is the label, w0 is the bias and w is the weight vector. So let's try to understand what each of these term means in the geometrical space. So the m minus 1 dimensional hyperplane divides the speech space into two regions, one for each class. Since we are, uh, we are in a binary classification setup, we have two, two classes and there are two regions. One is the region for class 1 and the second one is the region for another class which is typically a negative class which is let's say class 0 or class minus 1 and in region 1 we have the value of y greater than 0 whereas in the in another region or region 2 we have the value of y less than 0 whenever value of y is greater than 0 we classify that point into class 1 and whenever the value of y is less than 0 we classify that point into class 0 and then we have a hyperplane as a decision boundary and on that hyperplane the value of y is equal to 0. So this setup we have shown for a toy example where we have where we have two features x1 and x2 but the same description extends to a more general setup with m features. In that case we will have m minus 1 dimensional hyperplane as a discriminant function or a decision boundary and on that decision boundary we will have the value of y is equal to 0. On one side of the hyperplane we have region for class 1 where value of y will be greater than 0 and on the other side we have a region for class 0 where value of y is less than 0. So the decision boundary between two classes is represented by m minus one dimensional hyperplane 
and that hyperplane has got the equation which is w0 plus w transpose x is equal to 0. Remember this particular equation is in vectorized form. Let's look at what does w represent. So in order to derive geometric interpretation for w, we will consider two points xa and xb on the decision surface. Since both the, since both the points lie on the decision surface, and we know that the equation of the decision surface is y is equal to w0 plus w transpose x equal to 0. In place of x, we will substitute the value of xa and xb. So we have ya equal to w0 plus w transpose xa equal to 0 and yb is equal to w trans w0 plus w transpose xb equal to 0. These two x superscript a and x superscript b should be in bold phase because they are vectors, they are feature vectors essentially, which is represented correctly over here. So this one uh, will be corrected in the, in the slides later. Since value of y superscript a and value of y superscript b is equal to 0, if we subtract yb from ya, ya minus yb, it results into the following equation. So if we, if we do the subtraction, w0 gets cancelled and this wt is the common factor and we subtract the feature vector for point b from the feature vector of point A. So we have an equation W transpose xA minus xB is equal to 0. So what does this mean? So th these are, this is one vector, this is a weight vector and this is the resulting feature, uh, this is the resulting difference in the feature vectors. So the, the dot product of two, two vectors is equal to 0 that signifies that these vectors are orthogonal to each other. So indeed, the vector, the weight vector w is orthogonal to, uh, to the vectors lying in the, in the decision surface. So the, the vector w or the weight vector is orthogonal to every vector lying within the decision surface and hence w determines the orientation of the decision surface. Let's look at what W0 represents. For points on the decision surface, we have W0 plus W transpose x is equal to 0. We have seen this equation a couple of slides back and now by doing simple algebraic manipulation by taking W0 to the right hand side, we have W transpose x equal to minus W0. Now if we normalize both sides with the length of the vector, we get the normal distance from the origin to the decision surface. Something like this, w transpose x divided by length of the vector w and min equal to minus w0 divided by length of the vector w. So this gives us a normal distance from the origin to the decision surface. So w0 determines the location of the decision surface. So this is what uh, W0 represents. So W0 divided by the length of the uh, weight vector that determines the, the distance from the origin, the distance of the, uh, of the decision boundary from the origin. Let's look at what Y represents. So Y gives us sign measure of perpendicular distance of point X from the decision surface. So let's summarize the geometric interpretation of, of discriminant function. So we have w0 that determines the location of the decision surface, we have w that determines the orientation of the decision surface, y gives the sign measure of perpendicular distance of point x from the decision surface and this is the point that is of our interest and we want to predict the class label for this particular point. And Finally, the decision surface divides the region, the feature space into two regions, one for uh, class 1 and another one for class 0. 
Now that we understand discriminant functions geometrically, let's explore how to classify an example x with discriminant functions. So discriminant functions assign class 1 or label 1 to an example with feature vector x if w trans w0 plus w transpose x is greater than 0 and w0 plus w transpose x is nothing but y and if y is greater than 0 we assign we are basically in this particular region where we have this region belongs to class 1 so the point will be assigned uh, to class 1 otherwise the point is in other region where we have another class uh, and in that case y is less than 0 and we assign a class label of 0. So we can write this uh, mathematically as y is equal to 1 if w0 plus w transpose x is greater than 0 or 0 otherwise. So far we were studying the binary classification setup. Let's look at if we have multiple classes, how does discriminant functions generalize to multiple classes? Let's say we have a uh, number of classes k greater than 2. There are two ways to build discriminant functions. One way is called 1 versus the rest. In this case, we build basically the k minus 1 discriminant function. Each discriminant function solves two class classification problem or a binary classification problem. And in that binary classification problem, we want to basically uh, separate the class CK uh, versus not CK. So one class versus not that particular class. So that type of um, that type of binary classification problem we solve in one of the ways, which is one versus the rest, and the other one is one versus one. In this case, we learn K choose two discriminant functions. We learn one discriminant function. Per, play, per pair of classes. So there are k choose 2 total discriminant functions. There are some issues with both these approaches. Let's look at the issues with 1 versus the rest. This is an example where we have learned two binary classification problems with two discriminant function. One is for class C1 and not C1. So there is one uh, discriminant function that discriminate between class C1 and the rest and another discriminant function that discriminate between class C2 and the rest. Now what happens is because of these crosses there are these four regions R1, R2, R3 and R4. In case of R1 we know R1 belongs to class C1, R2 belongs to class C2 R3 also belongs to class C2 but this is the region where there is a confusion because this region, this region, any point lying in this region will get two labels one is C1 as well as C2 because it is on the positive side of discriminant functions of these two classes. So this region is in the, in the region corresponding to C1 as well as in the region corresponding to C2 and that's why this is an ambiguous region. And this ambiguous region causes us some kind of an issue and we are not sure what kind of class to assign to this ambiguous region. Let's look at another method which is 1 versus 1 where we learn where we learn one discriminant function per pair of classes. So let's say we have three class classification problems. So we have three discriminant function, one between C1 and C2, another one between C2 and C3 and the third one between C1 and C3. In this case, most of the regions are fine, but this particular region shaded in green is where all the confusion occurs. This region is, uh, is part of all three classes. This is uh, in the region of C1, as well as in the region of C2, as well as in the region of C3 and it is not clear what kind of label we should be assigning to this particular region and uh, such kind of regions could occur in one versus one uh, discriminant function setups. And these uh, issues are hard to, uh, hard to handle 
and that's why we need probably a better better method of learning multi-class uh, discriminant functions in this particular setup how do we do classification we essentially assign the point uh, that is classified uh, we essentially assign a point to a region uh, based on the majority vote Let's figure out how do we fix the issues with one versus one and one versus rest. So instead of learning multiple discriminant function, we'll learn a single K class discriminant com comprising K linear functions. So we'll get YK as a linear combination of, uh, of, the, of the feature. So we have WK zero plus WK transpose X. So concretely, for y1, for the class y1, we have discriminant which is w10 plus w1 transpose x. For y2, we have w20 plus w2 transpose x. And for class k, we have wk0 plus wk transpose x. So we learn such kind of k class discriminant all at once. So there are these k linear functions that needs to be learned. So here there are parameters like w10, w20, wk0 and then there are vectors which is w1, w2 and wk corresponding to these k linear functions. In k discriminant functions we assign label yk to example x if yk is greater than all other or other classes all other classes j which is not k so so we assign label yk to an example if yk is highest among all classes so the decision boundary between classes yk and yj corresponds to m minus one dimensional hyperplane uh, just as we saw in the binary uh, setup and this particular hyperplane is uh, given by equation wk0 minus wj0 plus wk minus wj transpose x. So this is the difference between the bias and the difference between the weight vector of class k and j. So we have um, m minus 1 dimensional hyperplane and we can compare this with our earlier equation for binary uh, classification where we had w0 plus w transpose x equal to 0. Now W0 corresponds to WK0 minus WJ0 and W transpose corresponds to WK minus WJ transpose. Now that we have a model of linear discriminant functions, we'll study two approaches for learning the parameters of the model. The first approach is the approach of least squares and second one is to perceptron. So with these two approaches, we'll learn how to estimate the parameters of the model. And once we estimate the parameter of the model, we need evaluation measures to evaluate the, the classification performance. So as we, as we discussed in our, in, in, in our first week, we use uh, measures like precision, recall, F1 score and accuracy as measures of classification. And we also derive measures like area under the curve of ROC and precision recall curves. The precision recall F1 score and accuracy is computed from confusion matrix. So whatever are the points in the evaluation set or the test set, based on that, we calculate the confusion matrix and based on confusion matrix, we derive a matrix like precision recall, F1 score and accuracy. So this brings us to the end of this video. In this video, we studied the model of the discriminant functions. We also looked at what type of uh, methods can be used to estimate the parameters that is least square and perceptron and we also briefly studied or summarized the evaluation measures that are used for evaluating the performance of the classifier. In the next video, we will study the least square way of estimating the parameters. Thank you. Namaste.